Folks, welcome to the CCL Bravo stream today. Myself, Seymour, and Jesse are going to be opening up the stream for you. We got banger matchups lined up as well. Jesse, it's going to be insane. But starting off today with High Point Esports versus JCSU Esports. And this one, it's looking like a big one. Yeah, it's going to be a good match. Not a super ton of implications coming into this match. It's pretty much written in stone. High point, they will be the number one seed going into the second stage. And JCSU, they will finish in the fifth seed here in the Southeast B division. But you know what? Even though there's not a ton of implications, I still think that this could be a really good match. I'm really excited to watch the hard points in this match. I'm super excited. But let's take a look at our head-to-head, -head, Jesse, for, for this one. Because these two teams... Uh, definitely looking like two different sides of the spectrum when you're looking at their scores. HPU 10 and 0, JCSU 7 and 3. And really at it, I mean, not a lot of implications as we alluded to. HPU first seed secured in their division, JCSU sitting in fifth. Um, what, what are we looking at here? I mean, one thing that really stands out to me when you look at the overall here between both records, it's like obviously you're undefeated in every single game mode on the high on the side of High Point, our number 20 ranked team inside of CCL. But when you look over at JCSU, Hard Point has not been the issue for them this season. 10 and 2, it's been a very strong mode for them. Yet to find that same success inside of Search and Destroy with a losing record currently of 5 and 6. And then Control at 3 and 2. And it has not been a very easy time for them so far throughout the season inside of those two modes. And largely, those two modes are the reason why they have lost a lot of their matches this year against the other top teams. They've been able to take hard points against top teams inside their division. But when they go up in search and strength, when they go up in control, that's where you really see this team struggle. Yes, it is. Let's take a look, Jesse, at our home team for the day. High Point University. We got Brewing, Freedom, Devilish, Sexton. And, and this squad, I mean, they made waves last year, but coming into this year, they look even better. Yeah, they do. And that's a scary thought because they were very good last year, like you said. But Sexton, he's returning, or uh, three of the players on this team are returning. Brewing going to be the only player not returning, but Sexton is that lead slayer on this team. And you're really looking for the three players around him to really kind of complement his play style and how he plays. But don't get me wrong, you're still going to get Devilish and Bruin inside of that oh, category, yeah. definitely leading the way in terms of slaying. This team is no joke. No, it's not. And, you know, coming in with basically the same roster brewing coming into it, he hasn't looked that bad for the squad. So, honestly, coming together pretty well, in my opinion. What, what do you think? Yeah, I, I do. I definitely think this roster is a very good roster. I'm excited to see how they kind of face up against other top cut teams in the next uh, in the next stage because they're they're in the Southeast Division, so they'll be going up against teams like Penn State in the next division, uh, Shenandoah, other really good teams who are either inside our top 25 or right on the cusp of our top 25. And I think that's where we're really going to get a good sense of where our top 25 really stand against each other is in our next stage. Well, let's take a look at who's across the table for them, Jesse. Our away team for the night, JCSU. We got Tempest, Kreza, Kays, Easy. A different story than the HPU team. You know, three new players this case the only returning player into the 2022 year and honestly they haven't looked bad but you know they haven't stepped up to the plate as much as we've seen hpu improve yeah, and, and again, it's really just kind of inside of Search and Destroy in that control mode, right? Inside a hard point, this team looks fantastic. I think that's why I'm so excited to watch the hard points between these two teams today. But re realistically, yeah, you've only got one returning player here in K's. And I, I mean, a lot of their losses have kind of come earlier in the year. So this team has just gotten better and better as this year has gone along. It's just really going to come down to how is this team really going to look inside of our stage two when they're going up against the other four, five, and six seeds inside of the Southeast division. And honestly, I still think this team could be a very good team come playoffs, Colin. They're, they're definitely going to have to take a step up, Jesse, if they're going to want to, you know, make it to playoffs later on because it's not guaranteed for them being in the fifth spot of their division. But let's look past this. Let's look past the teams and let's look into the series that we have. Maps and modes that we're going to be running through for the night, folks. Is Starting off for map number one, it's going to be Bokaj. Map two, Tuscan. We have a Gava 2 for confirmed map number three. And if this goes the distance, we got Tuscan and Bokaj to return to the plate. How, how do you feel about this map set? Well, we start on Bakaj, so you know that's just going to be a crazy hectic mode, and I think that's really going to kind of tell the tale for this for this series as well. If JCSU can come out and they can steal this map one on Bakaj, and the, I, I really think they could. They seem to be one of the only teams inside of this division that could really kind of step up and play to the same level of slaying inside of Hardpoint that you see from this high point roster. So this would be a perfect map for them to get the opportunity to do so, because it's really going to be all about finding the right kills at the right time, making sure you're setting up, and making sure you're getting a good 
amount of time on these hills when you get those four man wipes. And if they can do it here, they absolutely can do it again in map number four. So Bacaj is going to be a really big test for this series. And one thing we were talking about in the green room, we kind of highlighted over is easy into the roster. You know, it, definitely one of the lower players for JCSU if they're. Um, or when we're looking at the like the slaying category, the numbers category in general. So, so real, realistically, if you want to take down the number one team and make a statement going into the mid cut, you have to look at all four players to be playing on the same page and playing at their best. And in my eyes, I'm looking at easy to step it up. Yeah, easy absolutely needs to be stepping up to the plate right now with the rest of this roster. You need all four players firing on all cylinders right now if you're going to be able to take on this high point esports roster. And I mean, if you're high or sorry, and if you're JCSU, realistically, hard point should be what you're really focusing on trying to win against yeah. these guys because it is your best mode. But to take two hard points off of high point is going to be extremely difficult. So it's really going to come down to you not only need to probably take one, maybe if not both hard points, but you're going to need to find a way to probably take two of the three games in games two, three, and five in your search and destroy your control, which have been your weak mode. So even if you do take the two hard points, there's still no guarantee saying that JCSU can even come out and take this series. And even when we're looking at the hard points, you look at Bokash map one and Tuscan map four, they are two very, very different maps when it comes to the play style of this. Luckily now towards the later ends or or kind of getting into the the start of CDL, you know, towards major one, a lot of teams are learning from the best and, you know, taking notes in this. I, I've actually noticed that Bokash have has become a lot more fundamental inside the rotations where it's not as so much setup heavy. It's the way that you're going to hit a site, whether you're hitting it early or whether you're hitting it late, realizing that the time is already done. So uh, honestly, I'm looking at this team to kind of play a little bit proactive in this map one, show that they can think ahead because when that Tuscan comes, when it does get a little bit more fundamental, that's the tough part when start uh, when the, when HPU is going to be most likely looking to take ahead. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. If you can rotate and you can lock down spawns on Bakaj, you 100% should be able to do that on Tuscan, you would think. And that's, I think, why I was kind of alluding to earlier on when I was saying that if, if you're able to come out, you're able to play your game and win this Bakaj, while also keeping up with the slain and keeping up with your rotations, saying that when you go to that Tuscan for map number three, you 100% should have a chance to be able to take that. And you know what? Honestly, I think that they have a chance to take either one of these maps here against this team. It's just it's a big, big question mark on whether or not they can keep up with the slaying of this high point team. Because this high point team, they are no jokes when it comes to slaying. Keep your eyes on Sexton. Like we said, he's probably going to be the main leader on this roster for high point. I don't think you guys need me to tell you that, though. We've seen enough of this high point team on stream. They are very, very dangerous, especially behind their lead slayer in Sexton. Well, I think it's time to stop talking the talk and see if these players can actually walk the walk inside Bokaj because it's going to be a tough one. It's definitely going to be the hardest matchup for JCSU in the regular season, and everything's already decided. You know you're going to be going to the mid-cut. If you take this win tonight, it's just going to propel your confidence going into that to play against the, the rest of those squads. So let's see if they have what it takes, Jesse. Bokash, map one, everybody. We're ready to go, and we are into it. On board with HPU, setting up for this take on the less preferred side. But as the kills come through, it looks like they are actually taking control of Barn, looking to flip this map over. Yeah, instantly playing towards the top side of the map. So what that's going to do is it's actually just going to give them top, so like, like north-south spawns. So they can play for this from the north side of the map and try to spawn out these JCSU players down on the bottom side. It's actually going to give them a little bit of time inside of this hill as well on this P1, which is generally a hard hill to get a good amount of time on. But they're doing a good job right now of zoning these JCSU players off the hill and keeping them spawning out for the time being. But JCSU, they still just have not lost those spawns on the left-hand side yet. They haven't. They're going to need to, at some point, high point, win these gunfights, flip this map out. Setup's not there just yet for the power positions of JCSU. K is getting pressured out inside there. Kill feed still lighting up white. Second point is going to pop open. Brewing sitting here. Nice shots out of easy is going to take him down. You're looking on the minimap at player number eight, Sexton. Looking to make the play in behind. A little bit of help of freedom now that they know where Sexton is. And he's going to go down. JCSU are playing so good, but Brewing has been able to slip through inside this back shed and really negate JCSU of picking up these points. Yeah, they really need to figure out where where he's gone and they will find Bruin. He finds an unfortunate timing in the back there and they will end up finding him. But 
In all honesty, JCSU, you don't get a ton of time there, but at least you keep high point out of that hill for the first 30 seconds. And now you've actually flipped these spawns out towards the back half of this hill as well. So heading in towards our next hill, you've got the preferred spawns for now. Maybe just don't push up too far on this map at this moment so that you flip these spawns back into the favor of high point because uh, you, you really want to try to get a good hold and a good setup. And we've seen more and more so recently here in the CCL that you can really hold this one from the front. So JCSU, they really need to do a good job of trying to hold this from the back and holding those spawns right now. And you see the set up from high point. All four players on different ends of the field. Freedom's going to be hopping into Silk Up this time. Are they aware the Tempest is behind? Now they are sex and doubles down into that feed. They're looking to flip this spawn out again for JCSU to be fighting for the less preferred side, but they've broken it from the front. They're holding it from the front. Now JCSU in their own ends, they're going to have to break from a flank out of Tempest here on screen. Looking to make it happen. He's going to find the first on a Sexton inside the hill in for the contestion, but most notably just trying to let his team in as well. Three players going over high point, making a full fours. That's the break from JCSU. They'll get back in. They can try to contest towards these back half of this time, but it does not really matter right now because high point, they're still so close. They can also just contest inside of this point. You can really try to make sure JCSU is not able to lock down any of this time. And JCSU continuing to spawn on that right side is just bad news for them because that's going to leave these next spawns for this barn hill still into high points favor. And they should be this first team set up and ready to go here at the new hill. You're looking at brewing on the inside of this barn right now. A bunch of JCSC players are actually going to flip this one out. Easy's going to catch Devilish looking the wrong way. It's three down for HP on the inside. Bre uh, Brewing looking the wrong way. 80 to 30 right now. JCSU going to collect a little bit of time early into this hill, but here comes High Point on the re-break. Saxon's going to open up onto Kreza up top. Doubles down onto Easy. It's three for three right now. 1v1 on the inside. Saxon's going to win it out. So open hill at the moment, but look at JCSU spawn. They're spawning over in P2. So they're going to be able to reinforce this hill. It's still going to be a war, Jesse. JCSU, they're still just trying to hit this from the front. Everybody wants to try to put a little bit more time here into this congestion, but with four players dropping down, now only one player left, sorry, three players, now four will fall and easy. And the spawn flip comes through Ooh. absolutely massive now for high point because they find those kills, everybody pushes up. They could force the spawn out for JCSU on that left-hand side, and now they control the spawns once again, heading in towards what is li very likely the hill that you can grab the most amount of time and already have a 70 point lead here for high point East. HP, you're looking to push this one out of business. Kresa leading the charge back into this. It's good for one, but look at the answer back at HPU. Sexton is going to find two. Gets it back into the seal for time. Take a look at the minimap, everybody, because you're looking at JCSU spawning so far away from this Tempest. The only player close enough to hit this has to wait for his team, but they have to cross through hell just to make it on in. Tempest losing on teammates has to make it work, but a four down kill feed for high point. They are putting JCU against the ropes. Yeah, and uh, this is what we were a little worried about. And this lane is not even that big of a differential right now. Not big enough that you would expect a score line like this by a hundred point lead going the way of high point esports. I mean, JCSU, all the players outside of Kays are sitting right in and around even for their score line right now. So you would expect this to be a much closer game, but really what high points doing a great job of here in this first set of rotations is locking down spawns, holding on, getting good breaks from the front, even holding hills from the front if they have to. And that's just something you're not seeing from the side of JCSU at the moment. No, we haven't, but Jesse and a player that we've asked to kind of step up and look consistent from easies, he's doing a great job. Seven to four at the start, slowed down a little bit 12 and 12 and HPO, I mean, a little bit of a pop-off moment from Sexton, 21 and 11 is really the culprit of that feat. You got 36 seconds on this first hill, still up for grabs, but usually it is most notably going to be looking to flip this mass map up, burn the clock out, and that's exactly what we're seeing HPU do. You still see some players spawning up from JCSU, but it's a split spawn. They're aware of that. Easy gets taken down, and that's the map going to be flipped. The last time to this hill, that were uh, the last time to P2, it was JCSU. That was the first team that was there. They were set up. They were ready to go. And High Point just kept on hitting it and hitting it and hitting it and just did not allow JCSU to get any solid amount of time on this hill. And you can see this time, though, it will be High Point, the first team set up there. You've still got Sex and Roaming middle of the map as well, doing a good job of, of just pushing out the spawns and making these JCSU players uncomfortable as they try to push in and get towards this new hill. And it will be High Point that will be this first team set up. JCSU, they need to get a break at some point here in this game. Can it be on this hill? You look at Kay's trying to make a move in the back line. Brewing knows there's trouble afoot. He's going to deal with them quite easily. 
Nobody really in a situation for JCSU really to take this hill down. Still going to make a hit with the last 30 seconds. It looks like JCSU, they want this time. They don't want it in the hands of HPU, so they're going to take another hit at this. Tempest gets cut down. Another four down in the feed, and that's going to call for high point now to run. You're looking at Sexton to push this, to keep this pressure on JCSU. It's really time. You really can't afford to give up here still if you're JCSU, but this back time will not be contested. Bruin should be able to pick up these last 10 seconds. Even if anybody comes across that field, he will be right there, ready to go, ready to shut it down. So once again, heading towards Grandma's, JCSU first team here, first team set up. I feel like we've been saying that a lot tonight, but even so, back to this hill one more time. And the last time we came to Grandma's, High Point broke immediately and held this hill from the front of the hill, keeping JCSU spawning in the back. We'll see if that's the game plan again here. Three go down again. Spawns are going to flip. JCSU, they need to break from the front. And they need to break right now. Freedom's going to find K's. Doubles down onto Tempest. 223 and counting. They can end this one here. Devilish peeks through the window. It's four down. Suddenly, things a little bit wild if you're a JCSU fan. As they got to put the pedal to the metal and break this hill as soon as possible. In behind, it's K's. Tempest to double down. They're looking for the break here. Freedom on the inside. Still going to win things out for HBU. But only for a moment. Kreza comes up big with two to keep HPU out of this hill, but is it enough? Is it enough, Jesse? I mean, JCSU right now, they're really just kind of prolonging the inevitable at this time. It's a 238 to 67 score line. If JCSU want any chance of coming back in this game, it needs to be a absolutely perfect game from this point on. And I have just not seen enough from this roster to believe that that could happen. Well, already on the rotation, it's gonna be high point. Here comes the rest of JCSU pushing the business into the faces of these HPU Panthers. Sexton coming in through the side door is gonna find Tempest into this break. Set five seconds needed for HPU to put away this game. Here they come off the respawn back into this hill. Brewing's gonna be collecting his time around the outside. It's Tempest. He's gonna drop and that's gonna mean Panthers take map one. It's a really, really good map from high point. I mean, they just came out. They took care of business exactly what you expect this team to do as well i mean a big 250 to 77 win on a map one because is just i mean to get a map win on because by that much dominance is pretty special especially considering how close how close the slain was through that first set of rotations it's a little bit bigger now when you take a look at the overall thing. You got, what, everybody negative now on the side of JCSU. So high point, they really did take over in that second set of rotations. But even so, in the first set, they had 100 seconds of a lead going into the second set of rotations with practically a tie game. So as soon as they started yeah. slaying out, it was just that much easier for this team to pull that lead and pull this game away. We know it was going to be difficult, Jesse. And realistically, the start wasn't so bad from JCSU. But the, as soon as they were warmed up, you can see that high point. You can see why they're such a dominant roster. You got Brewing, you got Sexton just leading the charge, keeping up the pressure. And Devilish and Freedom, like, they're not having a bad game. They're just, they don't need to necessarily slay out. They just need to get the objective when they see fit. And that's exactly what high point did. They win it out 100 point club style. And now moving into the search and destroy, you have to imagine that they're past the warm up phase. This is the <laughs> dangerous HPU team that's undefeated. Yeah, can we just talk about the fact that Sexton had 27 non-traded kills in that game as well on the Bakaj hard point. Crazy stuff coming in from the man. And not only 27, like, that's a great number. That's also double or the exact score of what you have from the top two players on JCSU combined. So exactly what you want to see from this high point roster. You want that top player on their team coming out, playing at his top ability here for this HPU team. And... I mean, I think you're just seeing again right now on the Bravo stream why High Point Esports is the number 20 seed right now. I even think they might even be deserving of a higher spot inside the top 25. This team has just been pure dominance from start to finish so far throughout this season. Well, let's take a look, Jesse, at the maps and modes for, for this one. For coming up next is going to be Tuscan Search and Destroy. And now you, you look at that map number one, 250 to 77, HPU Panthers, they are in the driver's seat for this series and moving into Tuscan, uh, it's just going to be the same feed. I mean, you're looking at your submachine gun players to just take control of this map, find their lane, open up the, the push for your attacks, shut down the push when you're on defense. The submachine gun players are going to be a key role inside of Tuscan as well. And we saw them just tearing apart Bokaj. Yeah, and that's the scary part, right? Like, if, if you're a JCSU fan, I think you're really, really looking at this roster right now and thinking like, hey, I really hope these guys come into this next match 
or into this next mode and just really kind of slow things down for themselves. It felt like that map number one, they were paying a lot to high points pace. If they can maybe bring it down, play to their own pace throughout the rest of this map, and then maybe be able to pull this one back in their favor it would be a huge upset considering how their search and destroy and control has looked up to this point of the season. We were really relying on them to come out and really fight inside of their best mode, which was hard point. So to see them get 100 point club in that map number one really leaves me scared for the rest of the series. It, it definitely is, Jesse. I mean, realistically for JCSU, there is nothing to lose right now. Really, there's nothing to lose for either of these squads. It's just a little last little hurrah to show what you can bring into where you're going into stage number two. And for HPU, I mean, they are looking like monsters. But JCSU, I mean, I need to see some oomph from them. I need to see something that shows that in the mid cut, this team is going to hang. I mean, if anything, this is really good practice for JCSU right now, right? Like they can come into this, you go up against the top team inside of your division. And at the very end of the day, at least you're getting good practice from this match. You come in, you're playing at your absolute hardest. If you lose, you go back, you watch the tape, you learn from your mistakes, you come back better than ever. And like you said, they're not gonna have to go up against those one, two, three seeds inside of the Southeast division. So it might not be the absolute worst case scenario for them, but you know that they would absolutely love to walk away the final match for themselves here inside of Southeast B with a win here against High Point. It's just going to take a monumental effort for this team to be able to beat HPU. We're taking a look at Tuscan, everybody. A monument, monumental effort indeed is what you are asking for. I mean, I've seen crazier things happen in esports, in the CCL in general, and I'd be all for it. I mean, hey, we saw Minnesota lose the map yesterday. We, it we can did. absolutely happen. They said they were there was a bit of tomfoolery going around in that match as well. So I don't care. <laughs> so so it, you know you know who who knows at, at this point what we're gonna get at a lot of these squads. But for JCSU, we are just gonna have to hit back on the fact that Jesse, all four players need to play the best Call of Duty they've played if they're yep. gonna take down HPU. Absolutely. Every single person needs to be at the highest level of their game right now going into this one. And I think, honestly, I think you throw some weird things at high point here. You're going to Tuscan. Everybody's going to be expecting an A hit. Why not throw a B hit right off the bat here, Colin? Why not make it really, really weird right off the rip? Really try to just throw some guesses at this high point roster. Make them think a little bit. Make them not just have their standard set up over towards A on defense, where everybody generally goes to the bomb. Just throw something different at them. Make them feel weird and make them uncomfortable. Maybe, just maybe, you might be able maybe, to yeah. a map win here. I mean... You look back at, I mean, even my raid games, whenever somebody hits B, I'm just like, come on, guys. A site's the way you go. Stop going to B, but... Yeah, like, we're I, all expecting it, but... It, so, so you know, you never know what you're going to get inside of Toskin, and that B hit definitely is something that can shake things up early. I'd like to see it as well. But against the Panthers, again, it's just that question that I, I'm sure a team of this caliber, they are going to be ready for it. So, really, JCSU, they need to make it look good when they hit that site or when they hit or really that B site in general, it just, it needs to look like it is an option for the late game. So I'm looking yeah. at, at it to be convincing when they do go there. Yeah, absolutely. It's really, when you push towards that site, you should be expecting at least one player inside of, at least on plat watching over that site inside of Tuscan. It's uh, trying to think of exactly what it's called. It's inside the, it's inside the blank. Sorry, inside of the bunkhouse. That's the spot right inside middle of the map. The the little area in between command center and church. Generally, you'll have a player either playing inside of there or inside a patio, and you need to get that player out. If you can find that player before getting traded out, it gives you an instant advantage. You're able to get that bomb down on B, and you can get a post plant set up exactly how you want it. The only issue is when you hit towards B is that so many teams can get a quick rotation because generally you'll have two players set up either inside or around church, on top of church, bottom church. doesn't really matter. You'll have players set up right around there, so it's a pretty quick rotation for them. So not only do you need to get that first kill and get it without trading a player out, but as soon as you go to get that bomb down, you need to be expecting for the rotation to be coming in extremely quick. Look, Jesse, I played uh, eight earlier into the CCL year, right, right before the regular season started with, with Sexton. And this guy is a different beast when it's on the map. So JCSU, I mean, you can like check off all the highlights that you need when you're pushing either of these sites, but realistically, I mean, when Sex is going to be on this map, I, one thing I need to see them uh, yeah, shut down scary. is the is the overextension because I'm expecting a submachine gun of his pace 
he's going to be looking to get into enemy lines undetected and, and do it snappy as well. So you're going to need to be on your toes if you're watching yeah. uh, for anybody realistically on high point. But most notably, I'm looking at Saxon to make those plays. Yeah. So they need to shut him down. Yeah, Saxon with that SMG. I can only imagine how scary mid map is going to look facing down the barrel of the beast in Sexton, just running around with that MP40 in hand. It got a nerf earlier on today, and it just does not even feel like that after watching that map one, watching how Sexton was playing with it. Note that is because it is a lot closer range gunfights. So I mean, it might even be interesting to see how the MP40 fares at range inside of a map like this. That's where things could be really, really interesting. Welcome back, everybody, to the CCL Bravo stream. My name is Seymour. Alongside me is Cruisin'. We're hopping in with Tuscan Search to Destroy. HPU Panthers up 1-0 over JCSU. They're going to be starting on attack. Look at this raid from JCSU. They're walking into the blender right now. And it's big two for one to open this round up. Well, we said we wanted before the break to see JCSU throw something different at high point, throw a couple different looks, hit towards that B site right off the rip, but it's actually going to be high point right off the start here. Coming out, they're going to throw a bunch of bodies over towards B, and unfortunately, JCSU had the full read ready to go on that. And now look at the spread that you have from these JCSU players. You still got a player. You can see Tempest right in front of Sexton, a player right to the right of him inside of that patio on top Ooh. flat of B. They've got a lot of angles watched, but Bruin will find one, and that's going to leave us now in a two versus two, and that's going to open things up for them to hit back towards this A site. Look at where Easy is. Sitting back, Vines. Bruin has no idea. Oh, he <laughs> does know. Bruin, that's a sixth sense. He somehow knew he was Easy was going to be back there. Now 2v1, Kreza. Going to get the call to arms. Free kill into Bruin. Looking the wrong way. Brings us into a 1v1, but you are up against one tough kill. Sexton drops the bomb. Pushes into George. Good timing from Kreza, and he's going to find the clutch 2v1 to put him on the board. Yeah, what a read from Kreza. As soon as he gets, sees that bomb go down or hears it go down, he figures, hey, you know what? This player probably thinks I'm still up in that top window. Let me just jump down bottom mid, push through church, find the timing on this player as he wraps through to check the bomb. It's a beautiful play from Kreza. Able to get the kills, able to shut that down completely. And I mean, I, I, I appreciate the effort from High Point there in that round number one. You know, going towards B, really changing things up. Right now, though, with their search and destroy and probably how they won that map one, they're probably just trying out some different strats right now. Oh, they are, but, you know, typical from JCSU for the read. They shot them down like that. Throwing top church. A few shots dropped to 30 health. Case is going to open this one up bottom church with a kill into Devilish. So numbers and bomb down. JCSU are in a really good spot, Jesse. They can get player five up inside of the destroyed apartments. You can watch over this as well. So you're not wrong. They absolutely could be in a really good spot here to close this round out, but it will be a 3v3 now. Easy will find Sexton on the outside there. So that's the big gun now eliminated from high point as well. And the one thing you need to highlight is Church right now. Kreza watching this. Oh, the timing brewing. No idea that somebody's on the hunt for him. Kreza is going to get the shots. Has to back up. Only burning the clock right now. 15 seconds left. Good setup from Te Tempest and Kreza just to burn out this time. Kreza on the escape. Nine seconds remaining. Who's going to hop the bomb? Tempest going to find one. Swaps to the secondary. They line up. JCSU, they're looking really good on Search and Destroy right now. Yeah, JCSU back-to-back -back rounds off the start. And that's back-to-back -back first bloods as well for this roster where not only have they found first blood, but they've gotten first blood or, or won the initial trades to give themselves a man advantage. So good job from them. Giving yourself the man advantage is going to lead to more success inside a search and destroy. And that's what you're seeing here so far. And Kreza's still at 3-0, trying to maybe play for some of these streaks here. He still needs four in a row if he wants to find the glide bomb, which will obviously be the streak that will give you probably the most amount of value inside a search and destroy right now. Last time it was a hit to B. This time, all four players looking for the quick plants on A. Easy's going to spot it. He's going to be out. In front of the church, Freedom shuts down Easy now. Should be a confirmed plan at a sextant, but they're taking their time. Yeah, I think he was just dodging the set nade, so now Bomb oh, should devilish. go down. Devilish dancing with the devil right now. Just trying to play alive and what? stay alive. And he'll at least get one before he falls there. So keeping the man advantage in the side <laughs> of high point in a 3v2. And now the JCSU players, it looks like they want to try to hit this through broken apartments. I like this play from them because you just got to co completely eliminate that bomb watching spot from the map right now. I don't know. Maybe it was Kreza dancing with the devil in that situation. The movement that I saw. Tempest is going to be Saxon on the outside. It's going to be numbers now to high point and dropping right down into the pit, right into the line of sight of the last HPU player. It's going to be a point on the board for the Panthers. 
And as soon as they realized that they, those players were in the broken apartments, they just said, hey, you know what? That's fine. Let's just back right up. We're completely fine here. Play our different angles. We know which side of the map they're on, which side of the map they're going to be coming from. So we don't need to make we don't need to worry too hard about that. And able to close it out once again for themselves there. And that's a, that's a much better round out of high point on offense. A much more normal round that we're used to seeing where you hit towards that A site, dodge the set nades, get that bomb down. And JCSU, they want mid-map control right off the rip here. Kressel's going to get up and into a... Or sorry, Kays is going to get up and into a spot here inside of this corner. We saw a player last round on the side of high point play, but Kays is actually going to choose to get aggressive towards mid. But bomb goes down, and look at this big two-man flank coming in from the side of high point. Is it going to come in time, though? JCSU, they are putting some pressure into the church. Kays is going to find brewing... Devilish has to escape on the back end while this flank is hap is coming into fruition. Saxton off the flanks, gonna find two to trade from easy now. Even two v two. Freedom's gonna push out. Find K's last one left is gonna be easy. Bakes at a one v one. Whereas Devilish, he's along the backside, ready for the trade and on turn to put HPU into an even two two. So it got there just in time, but I was right there with you. I thought JCSU was going to make their full push just through church. And if they push that as a four man unit, I very likely think they win this round out and they're probably able to close it out. But it, the push was just a little bit too staggered from JCSU. I don't think they had all that information that you had two players on the likes of high point flanking him from behind and making that big long flank around. Like that wasn't just like a normal little flank. They pushed all the way through B all the way through the fountain spawn of the offense Basically, where you're seeing the players right now on the side of high point, that's where they pushed through. And, uh, I mean, it was just a little bit too late there for JCSU to get that raid. But if they read that a little bit sooner, they probably closed that round up. But high point, once again, want mid-map control. You can see Sexton slide right over towards this A side of the map once again. And, I mean, they've completely taken any map control away from JCSU that they might have even had. I like this from Sexton, just staying alive while the rest of the team are trying to take control of this church don't necessarily need to get that plant down it's just really high point they want to push jcsu back against the ropes freedom's gonna find tempest it's a two for one on the outside but that's bombed down easy may have just flipped the script crest is gonna find freedom win a big one on one now numbers to jcsu and that bomb down is gonna put brewing in a really bad position he can wrap out to Monument, though, and grab this. I don't think it should be too, too bad to be able to get this bomb back into his hands. But the issue is, is as soon as he chooses to plant this bomb somewhere, JCSU will know it. And I love where they're playing right now. They're just going to play right inside a bunkhouse. Just wait for the bomb to make the move. Wait for it to go down and play together and just play for a 2v1 retake. It's the best thing that they can do for themselves right now. Oh, and you can see him. he is very nervous about trying to do it. And yes, I, I would imagine that they've spotted him. If you didn't before, Easy has now, but oh. Brood will win a big one. Only 16 HP left, but he's able to get away with his life here. Chris has to play this right. The timing's on his favor. Seven seconds left. You gotta know he's planting. He's gonna peek on out. Brewing. No time to make that play. It was interesting in the 1v1. Maybe if he swung out mid, took the gunfight, could have caught Kreza by surprise. But realistically, without that time in your favor, you only have one move, and that's put that bomb down. Yeah. And I think Kreza, or I, I don't think he had any information on where Kreza was. He only knew of the one player there. So I think he was just banking on the fact that the other player in Kreza would have been over towards the B site. He was maybe hoping that they were playing a little bit split there, but they were not. And that's going to lead to a round loss there for high point. Another good round from JCSU, though, on defense, just able to shut down this high point offense once again. But this bomb instantly moving over towards A. And the set nade from Sexton will find one. Bruin finds one of his own. Oh. And oh, this is just a, that is just a round wiping. And that is JCSU off the map completely. I'm sorry, did we start the round? I, I may have blinked and missed it. A lot of people may have blinked and missed it. Well, if you were looking away for a second, that was set nade galore. Everything <laughs> that could go wrong for JCSU in that round did go wrong. I was about to say here. Let me recap: two set nades and a bunch of and uh, and two kills come in immediately. That was maybe what a ten second round, maybe. Crazy stuff from high point. That's just what happens sometimes when everybody meets each other mid map and you just get set nated off the world. High point. It's looking like another very similar hit to what we've seen. Everybody hitting out towards this A site and just completely taking control of church right off the rip here. Easy kill no way. onto easy for Sexton. And I mean, now you're just in a great spot. It looks like they want to try to wrap this bomb over towards this B site. Unfortunately for them, though, all the JCSU players are set up and ready to go there. That bomb is down in a terrible oh, spot. Oh, I mean, 
you have to know. You see the disengage from JCSU and they bunker into plat. They get that bomb down. High point now are going to have to reach into enemy territory just to get this one back. And if you look at the minimap, you look at Memphis, and he's on a big flank. But Brewing spots the top of the head of K's, rips it clean off. Numbers back in the flavor of high point. Crest is going to push the 1v1 to Devilish. Bomb still down, but now they're going to flip this one out and try to pin high point into this B site. They're going to try to pin him. And Tempest will find one. He does end up falling. So information and advantage once again oh, to Preza in a one versus one. No, he did not spot him across there, I don't think. He knows. He's on the chase right now, Jesse. He knows oh, exactly sure. where, where he's going. And, and I'm sure he spotted this one. He's just playing this one safe. Bomb's going to keep going down. And Cress is going to turn this corner. Find the gunfight. <laughs> Got a little bit scary. But he's going to put JCSU back in the driver's seat. Yeah, it's still not completely convinced he saw him there on that cross. It was some weird timing for sure. But like you said, nonetheless, he had an idea of where that player was going to go with the bomb, and he still was able to get the job done. And that's another 1v1 at the end of a round for Kreza. And very, very clearly leading the way for this team in terms of their search and destroys. And, and I mean, we came into this series and we said that high point, much better team all the way rounded. JCSU, a very good hard point team, S and D and control have been the weak modes. It's nice to see that they're getting a little bit better at S and D right now. And if they can take a search and destroy, this series is right back into who knows who's going to take it favor because, you know, high point might have had a very good map in that map number one on Bakaj, but that's not saying that map four will be just as good inside of that Tuscan hard point. Yeah, they're looking really good on Tuscan right now, pushing high point really to their most. Log is broken. Freedom's going to hear that. Information now to high point for the adjustment. Three players sitting inside a command center with one watching the late flank around. They got to go, though. They are wasting so much time. High point, they are so ready for this, Jesse. I think they're just trying to realistically bait out and hope that high point wrap back off the site but with the, all the information that high point is finding they are not going to be moving no. anytime soon so realistically if you're jcs you need to make a choice right now and it looks like that choice is kres is going to wrap the bomb back through middle of the map I'm not sure if brewing just spotted him by the way that he just backed up it looked like he spotted out the player trying to rotate with the bomb high point they have a bunch of inch Brewing in a position to watch this. Easy still watching the late flank from Sexton. Gets the early shot. Sexton dips on out. Freedom for the bait and switch. And Brewing's going to drop that bomb middle of the map. No, he's not. Bomb is going to go down. Tempest and Kreza in a 2v3 to push them to map point here. 38 seconds to make this happen. Freedom. We're going to shut these players down for one at least. Now it's all up to Kreza. A, he's had the ice so far here. He spots out one, can't find the kill, and even if he found that kill, Bruin was already on the defuse, and so unless he challenged immediately, would have been very tough to be able to stop that and read that there was a player on the bomb and a player watching over that Sexton finally coming away in one of these 1v1s against Kreza to be able to close out around it. I think that's the first time we've seen Kreza in one of those clutch situations actually end up losing one so far today. I mean, Jesse, that 1v2 in the back ends out of Bruin or out of Freedom was everything. The fact that you find one putting Kreza in that situation, yeah. it just makes it even more comfortable to defuse that bomb. Yeah, absolutely. High point, though. Offense has not been their strong suit right now for this roster. But back towards A, they go again. It just seems like every time they're trying to do something different right now, which I can respect and I really enjoy watching, but it looks like a much more regular A hit this time. But you will get the set nades coming in, and that's going to completely back Sexton off. Two HP right now. Lucky not to die to that flash. Oh, brewing, waiting. Patience does pay off. Goes in for a second. Oh, I thought he was about to burn Tempest. But 3v3. Post plants looking to get locked down. Still have freedom sitting pretty in the middle of the map, waiting for somebody to peek out. 32 seconds to make this happen. Sexton, is he going to be ready for this push? It looks like the jump around the corner is going to find Kresa looking the wrong way. No numbers against. It's going to be ever so harder just to break on in. Freedom basically next side by side with Tempest. Turns, finds the free kill. Now easy, last alive. High point esports. Looking to put two on the board in a row and push map point. Yeah, they get to 
bring us up to map point now and JCC it was looking so good it just feels like as soon as high point starts doing the stuff that you expect to see on a Tuscan search and destroy that is when this high point roster really starts to come alive I, I'm sure that some of these offensive rounds they're just trying out some new things here inside of the game but you can see as soon as they go back to a normal strat up and a normal strat that's where you're seeing this team find some success and I just see a sniper in the hands of easy so JCSU might be trying to make this a much slower hit this time through and he just wants to completely take any control away from the side of the map Nobody's not there. allowing any defense to be able to push up everybody's over at the b site well, realistically i mean high point they're reading this so well they're gonna burst on throw Kreza gets caught with his pants down first blood out of freedom and, and that's really gonna stump this whole play out of jcsu they're forced to go to the a site and player number seven k's needs oh, to be in this Temp position to watch for the flank tempest needs to get this bomb down now so, so that they can get out with their lives, get out in time. This is really going to come down to whether or not Easy can find a pick with the sniper. High point. They are looking like they want to concede this bomb plan and just play with numbers to flood this one out. But with the time burning down, I mean, eventually High Point are realistically gonna gonna make a push. Jesse, you're right, Tempest. You need to get this down soon because eventually if it's going to be too late. It feels like he's just scared of trying to put this bomb down, but it will go down finally here inside of this round. But you don't really have a post plan set up, set up for JCSU. These high point players, they can just try to set up a pinch right now. Oh, and look Kays. at Sexton coming in from behind. He might just be the player to put the nail in the coffin for this JCSU team. Kays tries to make a play, but it doesn't work. JCSU now trapped. Easy is going to find a pick. Easy finds two. Jet. Tempest now in a 1v1. Sex is last alive. How did they do that? Easy just came alive with the sniper, and we're going round 11. Wow, Easy. He finds two with the sniper in the round, and Sexton's flank just was that little bit too too slow that he wasn't able to get there in time. He finds the trade, but can't get the final kill onto Tempest. That was an extremely slow round. Man disadvantage for JCSU, but a great round win from Easy pulling out the sniper. They get offense again here in this round. So last time they threw two numbers to B, they had a sniper watch out towards A, and they had the bomb that sit forever on that A site before putting it down. This time it looks like an all-out hit for the JCSU roster over towards A. Oh, easy. Easy fell off the map. Clayster, welcome to the lobby. We'll see you next time. Now they need to push into brewing, but Case isn't going to look the right way. It's two off the board. Make it the oh, no. I thought it was going to be three. Tempest brings it to a 3v2. Suddenly things a little bit scary for JCSU fans with Easy dropping off the map and oh, K is going to no. be off the board as they are they're kind of trapped right now. They don't even know if they can go to A. They're going to just make the play call though. They just want to play and fly forward. Tempest slides around. It gets a little bit mixy, but he's going to find Devilish 2v2, Jesse. We're going over to the B side, it looks like, but again, somebody's on the hunt and Tempest looking the right way. They've completely flipped this out. Now 1v2 for Sexton. He's going to be here to look to shut this whole play down. He's reading this so right, but he's going to be looking the wrong way. And it's going to be JCSU taking the search and destroy. Oh my God. JCSU do it in a, what was that? A, a two versus four in what? round 11, able to take the game win. And I thought easy through in that round. I was going to say from hero last round with the sniper to fallen off the map in round 11. That could have turned out so badly for that team but luckily for him tempest showed up big inside of the search and destroy 13 and 8 to close it out matched freedom on the other side and devilish i think with a characteristically or, or an uncharacteristically low map out of him three and eight on the map 486 damage in 11 rounds that is pretty bad for himself out of there. Average damage around 44. So he's not even getting players to like half health through one round. That is uh, I mean, not Kays, a very good stat line out of the boy. Kays wasn't any better on the other side. I mean, five. Yeah, but he found all those kills though in that, in that round 10. Like he made an impact on the map. He they did. won that round 10 because of him. He did. I honestly, if Easy didn't find those two snipes to push that to around 11, I would be giving him some words right now. Falling off the map in around 11. I mean, I know oh, nerves man. sometimes get the best of you, but that, I was afraid for JCSU. Yeah. I, How do you even let that happen? I mean, just a little bit of a slip. High point, they must have buttered up the edge of that monument, and he, he must have slipped like a <laughs> banana peel. So it's Mario Kart-esque. You, you throw the banana peel down onto it, and uh, 
They, just, they they can't make their way around the monuments. It's, it's the new uh, it's the new throwable inside of Vanguard, if you didn't know. But I mean, that was crazy. Colin, the notes are out the window now, man. JCSU took a search, so it's the one thing we didn't expect them to see. We thought they were going to take the hard point. They took the search yeah. and destroy right now, and everything's up in shambles, everybody. So we're going to throw it to a break and get ready for a map number three. Gava two control is going to be on the menu. We're sitting one one. Things just got interesting. We'll see you in a bit. Folks, welcome back to the CCL Bravo stream. We got High Point University going up against JCSU. Tied one apiece with a surprising end to the search and destroy, Jesse. I, I am still left a little bit shook from what we saw. Well, I'm just going to say it. I'm convinced that McCornmeal is right. I am clearly the curse of CCL. And then me and you combined are just the curse of teams coming in with undefeated map counts. Because we saw it yesterday. Mankato lost a map. And now today, High Point, they lose their first map of the CCL 2022 season against JCSU inside of a search and destroy. Not just inside of a search and destroy. It was round 11. And it was a 2v4. I they had a it. they had a 4v2 inside of round 11. And Tempest just clutched up so big for JCSU to be able to close that game. But the fact that they got blooded by falling off the map and were able to rebound from that and come back and win that map, absolutely massive for this team. Oh man, well, the the back half of the series is about to be insane. It's about to be like, like you said, notes are out the window, folks. If you want to blame somebody for that, blame this guy right here. I mean, it definitely. I, I think you're cursed too. Let's take a look at the maps and modes of this series. Let's look back at what we have so far because, I mean, that hard point you can't really say much other than JCSU got smoked, two fifty to seventy seven. Tuscan search and destroy a lot different. Six to five, but a, a lot of those rounds, High Point should have won. I mean, JCSU, they iced up to take that one. And I was shocked at the outcome of what we got. Gavitu control coming up, Jesse. I mean, talk to me a little bit about what we got next. Yeah, so for uh, Gavitu control, it, it worries me because JCSU did a really good job inside of that search and destroy really slowing things down for their roster and i think that's how they were winning a lot of those rounds and you also saw high point throwing a few different looking strats at that jcsu team because high point knows they've got first seed locked in the bag right now so they're not really too too worried at the moment but now looking at jcsu and going to control i feel like because you lost that last map you're not going to be just throwing different strats at this roster anymore you're going to be flying full force at this jcsu team and it's going to be very hard for JCSU inside of, of a Gavutu control to not play to the pace of high point. They did a good job in that, in that search and destroy of slowing things down, but it's just so hard to not play at a very fast pace in control, especially when rounds are getting down to the very, very end and the nitty gritty. It's going to be really, really hard to not be just pushing towards the hill and running straight into high point players. Well, as we're waiting for one more player to join into this lobby, I, I mean, Jesse, Gavitu has been really the same thing over and over again since control has been brought into this. Defensive wins on defensive wins on defensive wins. The offensive round, however, you start to see teams, like, figure it out a little bit more, but going to that B side, it's hard to attack. I mean, is, is there anything you'd like to see one of these teams maybe pull out like a hey, hpu what, what would you like to see from them a quick hit to be right off the rip honestly no I, I don't think that's the way to be able to lock down and i don't think that's how we've seen a lot of success really come through on gavu to control i think the only way that it all out hit towards that b zone works is if you make the the big long hit to b but then also have nobody on the defense ready for it. If, if nobody on the defense goes for it and you get a full setup, yeah, that's great. That's good dandy. You can, you can get the hill. But very likely, you'll have at least one player sitting towards that backside that can call out that the hit's coming through, and then you can no longer catch that team off guard. And then you're kind of just pinched and trapped in there like you're trying to hit for the B zone anyways. And it just does not really work out that well in your favor. Really what it feels like, if you want to be able to get that B zone, it really comes down to... Finishing off A, capping that A site, and leaving A with numbers in your favor. You then need a player to sneak through the south jungle, get into the backs of the players on JCSU or on whoever is on defense sitting inside that back west beach, and then just taking some shots on them, forcing the spawn out down to docks or down towards the bottom office. And what that will do is it will at least give you time to stack the point, get inside some powerful positions, and then shut this down. One thing to talk about, Jesse, I mean, aside from the Capitu, we're confirmed another hard point, and that brings us up to the, the start of the series when we're talking about, I mean, JCSU, in the past, they look good on this. Now that you're kind of away from Polkaj, 
back to a fundamental hard point where you really don't need to be worrying about that slang to get really out of hand. I mean, maybe that Tuscan's in for a different feel. I definitely think after seeing JCSU on Tuscan Search and Destroy, they, they're definitely familiar with that map. So I'm looking to de get a big change in that map number four to come. Yeah, they definitely looked more comfortable on Tuscan when it came to their uh, when it came to that search and destroy. I think the big thing for them going into hardpoint though is going to be whether or not they can actually fix what they've been doing in terms of respawns because respawns have not been or, sorry not respawns. I'm, I'm talking about spawns in general have not been in their favor at any point. It felt like during that bagage. I think the only hill that they maybe were able to win the rotation to was P3. But even when they went to P3 on Bakaj, it was hard. It, it felt like High Point wanted to hold that hill from the front, anyways, because that seems to be more so lately the powerful way to hold that hill. And uh, it just really feels like that's whatever High Point wanted was what they got inside of that hard point. So going into that Tusk game, if once we get there, High Point absolutely needs to just keep playing the way they have. But JCSU needs to make sure that they shut down any rotations coming from high point. You can't let them get too comfortable on the map. Can't let them get comfortable whatsoever. Gavitu control, everybody. Map number three, a swing map now between both of these squads. As winner of this is going to take their lead back. Big question mark on the board. Can JCSU slay out HPU? I, I mean, they weren't able to on Bokash and Gavitu, a very automaton heavy map it's not going to be any easier those power positions they're going to do you wonders and i need to see jcsu really step up to the plate in those factors if they want to take this map number three and not only do you need to make sure you're slain just so that you can win rounds but you also need to make sure you're slain so that you can also take that final defense because like you were alluding to before defense is so damn powerful on this map mode combination if you can get defense in the final round it feels like you are almost guaranteed that win i say almost because it's not a 100 percent guarantee offenses still do sneak through every once in a while but man defense can just be so so strong and the way to get defense, you need to make sure you outslay the other team. So we'll see. I, I really do feel like we might see an offensive round win, though, here coming in from one of these two teams inside of their first rounds. I, I don't know why. I just have a weird feeling, Colin. I mean, after seeing that Bokash, I got a lot of stocks of the Panthers for a respawn. And they're going to be starting off on attack right off the rip, looking at the A site right away. It's two for two split at a JCSU. So it's going to be numbers for the Panthers early in this one. Sex at a freedom. They're going to open it up. And now this is going to be a setup. That you're looking for to put this progress out of the loop. Sexton, three down now for JCSU. As this A side, it is going fast. You can see they knew exactly what they wanted to do right off the rip there. The pre-nades over the top. You were blowing up the explosive barrels on that dock side of the map, along with just finding all these kills for your team. And Sexton is just beaming right now, top boat, with that automaton in hand. He was able to find one, wasn't able to get the second to close that out. But this A zone, it is done and dusted. Three ticks of progress. They stack the point, and you've got a four life lead now for high point. Two minutes on the clock to try to break into B, and they've already got progress over towards that side of the map. Freedom running the route in the back. Nobody knows, now they do. Finding K's is gonna put them up four lives. Minute 50 on the board. Freedom still looking to take these players off the respawn. Reza, slow peak, three down. High point, have a chance to get on this B site. Where is this fourth player? On the overextension, all the way deep into enemy lines. Devilish is now gonna have to pull himself back to find this. And while all that's happening, the respawns for JCSU are picking off high point on the inside of this B site. Yeah, the arcades needs to find this kill on Sexton, but no, he's oh, not going to. Head. Sexton will find a big one, and Sexton's going to keep challenging here as well. There's really nobody else inside and around the hill. It's just Sexton and Bruin, and Bruin will long. actually... Or, sorry, it was Devilish who was beside him, and Devilish will find one. That's two ticks of progress. They need to find a way to get him out this hill. Well, here comes Freedom around the back. Sexton having really something to say on the inside of this hill. Another one bites the dust. Sexton finds two now. That's four in a row for Sexton inside of this hill and single-handedly pretty much. I know there's a little bit of help, but towards the end of it, I mean, some big wins out of Sexton to find that offensive round. I mean, Sexton pretty much just capped that site by himself. He never died. He was the first player there. He sits inside the boat and just shuts everything down with the automaton in hand. I believe he finished on four in a row. 
Because, yes, he started that round on three in a row, sitting up on the top of that LST ship. And then as soon as he fell, went off spawn, wrapped over towards B, first player there. And uh, never ended up falling again throughout the rest of the round. Just a very dominating offensive round there for the likes of High Point. And they come away with a nine life lead as well off of it. JCSU, they need to answer back big for an offensive round of their own freedom. Spots out Chris in the inside. Spots the toe spots. The body. See you later, Krezza. And that's going to call from the collapse now out of High Point Esports as they are picking off JCSU one by one. It's four down, sent on back. And you got to be careful because Devilish is picking you off the respawn. Two kills out of Devilish. And this is dangerous. This is where you tend to see spawn traps happen. But you can see I like what JCSU are doing at the very least. They're kind of slowing things down and trying to play together here so that they don't just get picked off one by one pushing out of this but you're not wrong at all this is going to be a really tough spot that's a huge kill on a sexton get him out of that top spot of the boat and now you just need to find the rest of these trades together to try to make your way up towards one of the sites four and down. that's all four dead that's what a lot of that was needed just to get to this eighth side 26 seconds sexton off the respawn is going to get in Player out from behind over on A4 down in retaliation. Not oh. able to get a single tick off of that four down high point. They bounce back, Jesse. And, and I mean, I like the play. I like the try from JCSU there. The, the, the thought is they say, hey, you know what? Let's just push over towards B instead of going towards A. But I just don't feel like you had the time in your favor to make a big push over towards B like that. And it was an easy rotation from all the high point players who were coming fresh off spawn as soon as you touch B to wrap back over to there. 0, 0.0, the clock will get stopped, but you just need one more kill for high point. It comes through, they shut it down again, and that's going to be a 2-0 lead here inside of the control. And after losing that S&D, you can see HPU is not playing around here in the control, column. Yeah, that four down was a big moment for JCSU, but because of where it was, I mean, Sexton spawning up over at Docks basically nullifies any chance you have at getting that tick towards A, and as soon as Sexton takes that player down, you can see the rest of High Point deal with business over at B. So, I mean, like you said, JCSU with the right idea, just the wrong execution. And now on to defense of their own. They are going to have to win three straight rounds if they want to take this control. And a big defensive round might kick them into gear. Tempest wins one onto Devilish. The trade's going to be there, so time has stopped. 1 minute 14. Freedom on the inside of A to collect progress. Nades over the top here for the players on the likes of high point, but that's a much better defense from the JCSU players. They're at least not allowing the, by, by this time in the last round, high point had already completely finished this tick off. They had 2 minutes of progress left on the map to, to make their way over towards B. So much stronger defensive showing over towards this A site right off the rip here for these JCSU players. The issue now though is you still got all the players coming off respawn from high point, and they're all pushing forward and now going to try to get back in A once again. Bryza finds Brewing. Snaps down to Devilish. Gets the shots, but can't finish him out. Tempest called to arms to trade it. It is there. Still split kill feed, though. One for one as it goes. Saxon is going to put easy six feet under. And high point now haven't yet gotten to this point. 36 seconds left to win out this round. And... I mean, there's not enough lives, or there's not enough of a life deficit, Jesse, really, for you to just put this all to kills. You need to cap one of these sites. Yeah, you absolutely do need to cap one of these sites. You've got 27 seconds, though. Freedom is inside of the hill at the moment, so progress will start going up. And Freedom actually finds a big two-piece as well, so this should allow them to now know, hey, we've got three down. Let's start stacking onto this point. There's that furthest player push forward and easy. He will find one, but the stack is still in. Second tick of progress is good. Okay, he's shots there. Three down for high point. 26 seconds left now as all eggs are really being thrown at the wall. Tempest turns around, finds K's right behind him, trying to stretch to take these last players down, but the A site gets captured, Jesse, and we're adding another minute to the clock. So minute 15, way less time now for high point to try to hightail it across the map, get over towards this B site, and look at Kresla's position in it as well. He just kind of conceded that point over towards A, and he's going to play towards this backside, towards the North Beach portion of the map, and just kind of wait there. And actually, no, he's going to get aggressive off of that and push up towards the ring. I would have loved to have seen him sit in that position because he would have been the perfect player to be able to flank any push from high point going over towards B. Things are going to really sprout off of this devilish flank. Easy trying to cut off this player inside of the sniper tower, but I don't think Easy really has an idea 
that he's up here. They're kind of coexisting together. Sexton finally going to drop off, and Easy's going to pick off these players. Sexton realizing <laughs> the mistake he made. He's like, oh, there's somebody up there? I jumped over him? Oh, oops, my bad. Yeah, definitely not the worst situation now for Easy though, because he's pushed up on this map. They've got high point kind of pinned in the back, exactly where you want them when you're on defense. Only 20 seconds left for high point to make it all the way across the map. And at this point, it's going to need to be pretty much individual pushes because you only got 15 seconds. You've got to go high point. Yeah, you got to go now. Five lives remaining, eight seconds to touch this. And honestly, I don't mind this whatsoever. They have such a comfortable lead right now. They don't want to give any more lives to JCSU than what's already been shed inside this round. So they're going to concede the round, move over to defense. A lot easier to win a defensive round and put this one away. Three, two to one for high point at the moment as we flip sides. Yeah, and I mean, not only do you need to win this round here for JCSU, but you need to make sure that you pull this off with a good significant amount of kills because you want that defense in the final round, but you are being outslayed pretty heavily through those first two rounds. That last round definitely going to help it a lot, but like you said, smart from high point at the end of that round to just not concede any more lives to the JCSU players. JCSU, they don't want to show their hand yet early on in this round, and they're not going to push directly onto this A site, but a split feed comes in right off the rip and really they just don't have a big advantage towards either site they might be able to hop on a now though they haven't hopped on a they're still playing the kills tempest has slipped the line for jcsu they have an idea on sex input inside that feed devilish cutting off these players where they can make anything happen in behind tempest this play amounts to nothing trying to work themselves back to this a site but High Point have completely taken control of this boat once more. Kreza, easy. They find two. That's the go-ahead now to start pushing to this A site. In goes Tempest. He finds Brewing, and they're going to start collecting. So I believe it's an eight-kill lead right now for High Point that they need to be able to win this round by. So it's definitely not impossible, but they need a very, very dominant offensive win here on this defense if they want that final defense to really give them a good shot to be able to win this game out for themselves. So they hold on to a two-life lead right now, but only one tick of progress and over towards AM with only 20 seconds left. Realistically, you got maybe one, two good more hits at this one if you're able to get back and keep playing. Oh, How site. do you find that kill? Easy still up top. Second tick's going to go through. Brewing comes in for seconds, and he's going to take it. 19.2 seconds. Brewing three in a row, completely opening up this A site. You need to hop onto this if you're JCSU. Are you going to kiss your gap to goodbye? Devilish going to snap onto easy. Here comes the last couple players for JCSU. One last push remaining. Kays, the closest one to make this down. Sexton is going to take him out. And with four seconds left, high point esports are going to go up 2-1 in the series. And high point, they're able to just get it done at the very end there. A nice little 3-1 win, and it comes down to that first round, honestly, Colin. Every round after was pretty close, but high point in that first round really, really dominated the JCSU players. A nine-life lead at the end of it and an offensive round win. Those are things that are very, very hard to bounce back from, especially inside of control. You got a good little fight there from JCSU towards the middle half of that game. It just was not enough. And again, it's K's on this roster. The, the only returning player for this JCSU team struggling once again here today, Colin. 10 and 17 in that map. Just not the best looking map. And you really didn't have a much better bounce back game from Devilish. You were really comparing those two at the end of that last game. But still did that a little bit much more. And that, that map number, that round number one really was kind of just an individual play from Sexton, which won him that round. I don't want to single somebody out, Jesse, like like Hayes, but as the only returning member of your roster coming into the season, I mean, I mean that's just, if we're going to take, take a step back from this, this slang category like this, I, I hope he's providing leadership for the squad yeah. because the, it's just, those are not numbers you want to see from a veteran player coming coming back to the CCL. I'm hoping that, you know, this is more of an IGL role that Case is coming out with, kind of leading the rest of the squad to where they need to be at the right times. But if you're going to take down HPU, we said it in the keys to victory, you're going to need all four players playing the best Call of Duty, and this is not it. I mean, you're not wrong at all, but even still, if you're running an IGL role, 
you still need to be dropping numbers. At least like a 0.8 to a 0.9 KD. You can't be going almost double negative. That's when things are going to get really, really rough for your team. And you said it. We both said it at the start. You need to be firing on all cylinders. And I completely agree with that point. We saw it inside the Search and Destroy from this JCSU team. Everybody fired together. Everybody played off of each other very well. But when it comes down to the respawns, this lane right now just not there to the likes of High Point Esports. That's where you're really falling behind. We go to Tuscan Hardpoint next. The first hard point you got absolutely smoked if you're JCSU. Oh, yeah. there, no, no, no question about that. You got smoked. We can take a look at the maps one more time as well if we want to see exactly what it was. It was a 250 to 77 on that Bacage in map number one. And I mean, it's just tough because you go to Tuscan and this is a map where where rotations are going to mean even more than what we saw in Bacage. And the rotations were won almost every single time by high point. I feel like it's going to be even easier for them to hold on to some of these hills. So JCSU number one priority is to get the rotations on lock going into this map. You know, I'm trying to think back at the Bocage to remember the rotations from the Panthers. And the only thing I remember is them just bullying on Bocage. It was every hill. Every yeah. single hill. Even if they didn't make it to the rotations, they broke it within the first 15 seconds. Yeah. So, I mean, Tuscan, you have a lot more breathing room to set up on those power positions to make a really powerful setup coming to fruition, but you're going to need to see when the hit from high point comes out, you're going to need to see them step up and slay out. I mean, Tuscan Search and Destroy, they looked good in the first blood category. JCSU were finding good picks, and it's because they were playing their game. They were playing their pace. They weren't playing up to the level of high point. I need to see that again inside this Tuscan hardpoint. I'm going to need to see them play their game because so far inside that control, inside that Bocage, they're trying to match the Panthers at a rhythm that they just cannot stand to. Yeah, but it's so hard in, in hardpoint to do that, though, to play to your own pace in hardpoint because if the other team just keeps flying at you, you, you eventually need to start answering back what numbers are your own. I think the big thing maybe as well, Colin, would be if you are going to slow down your own pace, don't hit individually at the hills. Make sure we're hitting as a full four-man unit. Make sure that everything is coordinated between our team and the maybe, just maybe, you might be able to pull off this map win. I thought that hard point was going to be the best chance for, for JCSU to take a map off of this high point team. So if they can do it here, that'd be massive. But after that map one, I just don't feel confident enough in saying it after watching how badly they got beat on Bakaj. But you, you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe Tuscan might be a different story here. Oh, we look back at like the series we casted yesterday, Jesse. It's if you take this map, if you get to that search and destroy, you look good in the searches, JCSU. You got a chance. You just need to get there. And right now, the only thing in your way are the Panthers on Tuscan hardpoint. So we're going to get into this map. We are going to get things ready to go, folks, for map number four of this series. It's a big one for JCSU. Not a lot of implications for where you're going to land inside the division. That's set in stone. If you take down the Panthers in a hard point, you're going to be feeling good going into the mid cut. Yeah, you absolutely want to go into stage two with this win under your belt. If you're JCSU, to be able to go in and say like, hey, you know what? Guess what? We might be mid-cut right now, but we were able to take out the top seed inside of our original division inside of stage one. It would be massive for this roster. But nonetheless, off to the races we go. And it's going to be high point starting off on those good side spawns. They can get to this hill a little bit quicker and exactly oh. what you want to see off the start for high point. A full four-man wipe. They don't push forward either, so they're going to know that JCSU are spawning on that right side still. Yeah, if you're JCSU, the only thing you really want to make sure you don't give up are these spawns freedom trying to make a move for the bottom church is going to be cut down from k's tempest pushes up through the middle of the map it's going to be two off the board from high point and now they're looking to put some pressure into this first hill tempest and k's that's three down for hpu on the inside this last player is going to get overwhelmed kreza flips it out last 15 seconds looking to get picked up but while this is happening player number two brewing is in their spawn yeah, Bruin makes a big play. He pushes all the way through the bottom side of the map. He's going to flip these spawns out now as well as we head over towards our column hill. Devilish is going to have a big job here, though. Big one-on-one -on -one with Preza inside of this little room uh, just above him. He doesn't know that Kreza's in this position either. Kreza will fly out. Kreza will get dropped. So only one player really in and around this hill right now for JCSU. But with the positioning of their other two players up at the top of the map, they will spawn close. This is very similar to if you were to spawn up in control. Again, a lot of purple into the kill feed, and they are just locking things down for hill number two, Tempest. 
And FGC or G GACSU set up for this pinch. Off to respawn. Sexton's going to find K's. Trey's going to be out. JCSU now looking to put some pressure on, but they are just losing players left, right, and center. And with 20 seconds left, Jesse, might be the call to give it up, and that's what it is. That's a call that you absolutely need to make right now for JCSU. I mean, if you get a full 60 here on the Fountain Hill, you're right back inside of this game. But the issue is, is trying to find that full 60 because now High Point, they're making the full rotation as well. Everybody pushing off. You're losing all the gunfights on rotation. And now it's a 3v1. It's just Kreza by himself. He's trying to play his life. He cannot. So High Point, I mean, not only do you get the scrap time, but you also turn it into initial time at the new hill. And up 77 to 13, this is looking very similar to Bakaj right off the start. Their university bull Please, Jesse, and they do not want to let JCU have fun whatsoever. Kreza is going to get into this hill. JCSU are soaking up a little bit of time, but again, here come the Panthers on the resurgence. They're going to get into this hill, take Kreza out, look to lock things down once more for the rest of this time. 30 seconds, so plenty of time to pick up, but as the kills start picking up for JCSU, they might want to start turning this into time of their own, but... With the amount of pressure that High Point's been putting on, they, they look scared. Here comes Brewing again just to get this last little bit off the board. But heads up play from Kreza to be taking this. But no, I mean, I mean, High Point, even though they lose these fights, they're not allowing JTSU to get any of the time. Yeah, JCSU, they get a very minuscule amount of time there. And actually, the scrap time will go the way of High Point. No as way. They actually have Freedom, who just kind of chilled in the back, waited to make sure nobody else was going to push onto that, and soaks up those last 10 seconds there for High Point as well. But we look at the rotations. This is JCSU. They're going to be the first team here. They need to make sure they don't lose these back right spawns. But two of their players pull forward. They don't see the players. They just must have had the worst timing in the world. High Point gets the break in the back. These should be spawns now good for High Point. Closest player is going to be Kreza. It's freedom going to be right if it doesn't matter. He's going to dip out. Let his teammate pick up these kills. Snaps back to Kreza again, but on a five spree. Kreza looking to pull his team back into this one. Sassing gets shut down on four. And the break's going to be through, but still after all this, I mean, the story of this hard point so far is that even though JCSU Jesse are finding kills, they're not turning it into time. Yeah, they're finding kills, but they're not finding, like, the important kills right now, Colin. They're, they're not finding those kills which will lead to a good amount of time here on this hill. You're not finding those four-man wipes which will lead to, t to 10 to 15 seconds of time guaranteed for your team. They just haven't found any of those kills yet. You will get the first setup here at Command Center, and if you can get a full 60 here or find a good chunk of time here, you can really start to claw this game back into your favor. But high point, it does not look like they're going to be giving this up by any means necessary. Everybody pushes into the hill, and it's an instant break again. High point esports. I mean, uh, every time they need a break, they get one, uh, and it's almost flawless every time. Every time they want a break, they get the break. Sexton looking to do it with the sidearm. Too many players to aim for. Tempest, a team nade on decays, is going to thin the lines of JCSU as they're trying to push this. Easy from below. Setup is there for the break. Can they execute? Here comes Easy. Finds the first inside the window. Traded out. Not ready for that to be out. 15 seconds left inside this hill. And again, it's high point. Pick it up. And yeah. I, again, what is this? Another free 10 seconds to the likes of high point. It's going to be double, or not double, sorry, but a, uh, what, 120 point game? To the, to the likes of high point after the first set of rotations, maybe even bigger than what we saw inside of the Bakaj hard point after the first set of rotations. But JCSU, once again, will be the first team here, be the first team set up inside of this Monument Hill 4P1. I mean, but they, they just need to hold on to one of these hills eventually because we, we said coming into this one, Colin, that the, the issue was is they weren't rotating in Bakaj. Well, this map, they're rotating. They are just not winning the rotations because they cannot hold on to anything. Well, this is their best look so far after the first 30 seconds still standing strong inside of this hill. Well, I like this look at a JCSU. I just hope it's not too late into the game to make it happen. 23 seconds to play for. Looks like High Point want to take one last swing. Bruins taking the line swing around with that auto. It finds easy as well. Kreis is going to hop in for, or try to hop in for the scrap time. A couple players to get through before that happens. Another three down, and last one up is going to be player number eight, Easy, up into that broken window. They need to cross through the whole map just to get to the second site, and it's going to pop open. Look at Sexton's positioning. Yeah, Sexton in a really good spot to try to shut this down. He'll get one, and he slips out with <laughs> his like, life. Goodbye. All the call-outs going to be coming through now, so his teammates know, they, hey, I need some help. I've got a ton of players trying to push through this plat side of the map. 
and all the kills once again just falling into the favor of high point they're just playing these holds so so well right now it's just they're so fundament their fundamentals are so ironed out even when they're taking these gunfights the fact that sexton values his life so much it's just showing that i mean high point they know what they need to do if they're going to take a win and it's just staying up with numbers 20 seconds to pick, uh, pick up will lay high point even closer to this victory for the series as you see jcsu is taking another swing at this and is it going to work they they have to make sure they don't flip things out inside the mini map they don't but it's going to be a race now to set up for this fountain hill yeah, but the issue is, right, is you can't afford to give that time up. You can't afford to let High Point get that much closer to being able to close this game out. So they only have two players worth of pressure over trying to hold on to this hill for now, and you lose one immediately. So High Point with a good chance of trying to break this from the front, but you do hold on to the spawns at the very least if you're JCSU for now. So you just need to wait and try to hit this as a full four-man unit once again. They're in the hill. JCSU surrounding it. Nobody inside just yet. Tempest slides on in. You see HPU now pushing through that first hill and inside the kill feed, a lot of JCSU is going on. Devilish finds Tempest outside in the staircase. Crescent crosses through No Man's Land. Sex is going to find him with his pants down into the hill now. 10, 20 seconds remaining for them to put away this hill. They can't win it now, but again, Jesse, they can get real close to it. Yeah, you're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one for scrap time again and it goes the way of high point again so that's gonna be another free 10 seconds nobody on jcsu close enough to be able to contest this so what is it 244 high point should be able to get to they do hop off the hill just a little bit before but only no eight way. seconds left needed to close this game out it needs to be perfect for jcsu from this point on and high points already back inside the hill saxon coming in behind is gonna find tempest so now nobody in a position to hit this four seconds left and freedom on the inside is gonna snoke up every single drop they need high point esports they do it again in the hard point and they 100 point club jcsu to take the win 3-1 it's just kind of crazy, right? Because it's like that Tuscan search and destroy, you don't throw away a 2v, a 4v2 in round 11. You probably 3 0 this. You probably finish the end of stage one undefeated in map count. And that, that map is going to come back to kick these guys really, really hard. But got to kind of hone in on this map just a little bit more while we're in it. Great map out of Brewing and out of Sexton here inside of Hardpoint. Both those players, we expected them to be the players to step up for this roster, but once again, do so. And Kreza's effort of 24 and 19 just was not enough. You need the other players on your roster to step up big, especially in respawn, against this high point roster, and it just wasn't the case. Tempest did a great job in the search and destroy, but 11 kills through an entire Tuscan Hardpoint, it's just not enough. No, it's not. And you can tip JCSU for that search and destroy win, but but you're right. I mean, that round 11, it was a pure I, luck the way you found those gunfights, yeah. I, I have to say. I mean, high point, they had control of it. And I mean, that clutch pushed them to that map number four. But again, it's just the same results inside the respawns that you expect from, from high point esports. And we were not just looking at this from JCSU's point of view for improvement. I mean, High point now going into that top cut for stage two. I'm I'm glad that we're seeing inside these respawns all four players really playing up to a consistent level. Nobody really falling behind, nobody pushing too far forward past each other. I mean, Sexton, I'm expecting him to put up the numbers, but I was curious to see what we got from the supporting cast and what we did see today. I mean, I'm excited to see what this team has in the top cup because this is looking like a top contender. Yeah, high, high point, it should be really interesting seeing them go into, into the top cut. When you're looking at top cut for this division as well, for this uh, Southeast division, the big thing that you're looking at, there's a couple big names that are coming into this. You're going to have Penn State. That's going to be a very tough team. I believe they're still number 10 ranked inside of the CCL power rankings, either 10 or 11. Again, you've got high point. High points already beat Charlotte and UNCW, so don't really need to worry too much about those two teams. But looking at the other pools, FSU is going to be very good. Mox is going to be tough to beat. I still don't know. I don't know if we know for sure if it's going to be KSU or Georgia Southern coming out of pool three still as well. So that's going to be one that we wait on and see. But in even pool four, I mean, you got Florida Gulf Coast, you've got Barry University. I mean, University of Central Florida, like, like it is going to be very, very tough to be able to come away. Even Concord, because Concord should be the last team inside of Pool 1 to be able to make it out. So it's going to be tough 
for this high point roster a lot of top schools and that's why i'm so excited for stage two because it's going to be every single weekend week out top school versus top school who's going to be in that top 25 at the end of it we will really be able to tell the full story at the end of a few weeks inside of this oh, top yeah. division it's really going to kind of exploit a lot of weaknesses for these top teams i'm glad like you talked about the division i mean barry just 3 owed fgcu on land in their own like, territory crazy. like like that that was insane to see so i mean the competition only gets harder and i'm excited to see when that happens let's take a look back at the maps and modes for a little bit of a recap of this series though because it was high point all throughout the whole respawn mode to make this happen 100 point club in both hard points three to one on gava to control and what could have been around 10 win inside Toskin, even around 11 win but they give it up to jcsu yeah. we see a little bit more call of duty between both of these squads and this is the outcome we get to end both of these teams stage one run yeah jcsu they, they gave it their all but i know high point man they are kicking themselves right now for losing that search and destroy you know you want to finish the end of stage one undefeated so the fact you come into this one yeah, I know what they were doing in that search and destroy through the early rounds as well, Colin. You know they were throwing different plays out there, trying some new things, because they were not fully taking this JCSU team seriously after 100 point clubbing them in map number one. They said, hey, you know what? This is a good chance to get some good practice inside of S&D. Well, the practice, it might have paid off for later, but for now, it's going to end up with a loss on the ledger very first one of the year but they still get the job done like you said inside a respawn and it really wasn't close in the respawns no no it, it wasn't and and that's gonna re like end it for this whole first series of the J day jesse i mean realistically I i'm happy with what i saw out of high point university jcsu they have a lot of adjustments to make for that middle cut and that's really the recap that we're getting after both of these but another big one coming up after this matchup for a second series of the night casted by Susano and Cash. It's Wisconsin Con versus Maverick Esports. Two teams, or a team that we saw yesterday, make a really good showing on the Bravo stream. I'm excited to see it happen, and I'm sure you guys are too. We are going to cut to a break and do a little bit of caster musical chairs, get Susano and Cash into things, and we will be back with some more CCL action in a moment. <laughs> 